Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and it's time for an edition of Tom's Toolbox today. And we're gonna be talking about some of the reasons that motors fail. Now, motors don't fail due to age or hours of operation alone. Uh-uh. There are many stresses that work in conjunction with time to degrade components within a motor that result in motor failure. Now, motors are gonna survive thousands of hours when these factors are reduced to a minimum. First up on the board, heat. Temperatures over the design rating take their toll on the motor in various ways. Electrical insulation deteriorates at a rate that doubles with every 10 degrees Celsius over the rated temperature. Now, this can cut the life of a motor in half. And I don't know about you, but I like to get more than half of my motor life. Excessive temperature also causes the separation of greases and breakdown of oils, causing premature bearing failure. Now, the primary causes of overheating are overloading, starting too frequently, high ambient temperature, a low or unbalanced voltage, and inadequate ventilation. Power supply problems can also contribute to motor failure. Ideal power, it's a perfect sine wave on each phase of the motor's rated voltage and frequency. Now, many times the following problems can be encountered. You have overvoltage. At moderate levels is usually not damaging, but it can reduce efficiency and power factor, and we want motors as efficient as they can get. How about undervoltage? Increases current and causes overheating and reduced efficiency in fully loaded motors. Now, it's relatively harmless in motors running below the rated loads. Voltage unbalance. This causes overheating and reduced efficiency. Winding insulation life is reduced by one half for every 10 degrees Celsius increase in operating temperature. Unbalance greater than 1% requires the motor derating, and then motors should not be powered by a system with more than 5% unbalance. How about voltage spikes, commonly caused by capacitor switching, lightning, or cable standing waves from a variable frequency drive, or VFDs. These tend to cause turn-to-turn -turn shorts. Bearing damage from shaft currents. Uh, this usually originates from VFDs. Insulated bearings, shaft grounding system, or load reactors can solve this. Moisture and humidity become a problem when a motor is de-energized long enough to drop near the dew point temperature. Moisture weakens the dielectric strength of the electrical varnish and other insulating materials. Now, it also contributes to corrosion of bearings and other mechanical components. Moisture from the air can mix with certain particulate contaminants to create a highly conductive solution. Insulation moisture can be reduced if the motor is kept warm. Now, motors stored in human environments should be pre-warmed several hours or even days before you want to start them up. Now, this is going to help to dry out the moisture accumulated in the motor windings. The addition of space heaters can aid in keeping the motor warm and free of moisture caused by condensation. Contaminants are a problem that constantly plague motors. Contamination cannot be completely excluded by total enclosure or even an explosion-proof enclosure. Now, here's how contamination destroys motors. Three ways. Abrasion, corrosion, overheating. Now, some airborne particulates are very, very abrasive. Uh, motor coils flex when in use, and contaminants with abrasive particles can eat away the wire enamel. Not good. Uh, some contaminants, such as salts or coal dust, are electrically conductive, especially when you combine them with moisture. Heavy accumulation of contaminants can obstruct cooling passages, either internally, when you have an open motor, or externally in a closed motor. Now, this leads to loss of ventilation and overheating. The next factor, improper lubrication. Did you know motors can be over-lubricated as well as under-lubricated? Mm -hmm. Grease itself can introduce components into bearings if care is not practiced in loading grease into guns and protecting the injector tip from dirt. I mean, you can do everything you can, but then just a little bit of dirt gets in there, can mess it up. Mixing greases with different bases can cause the grease to separate and run out. Unusual mechanical loads can also contribute to motor failure. Mechanical conditions can overload bearings, leading to early failure. Mechanical conditions can also distort the motor frame. That causes an eccentric air gap, which in turn can cause vibrations and bearing failure or winding overheating. Now, here's conditions that you want to avoid. Misaligned couplings, an over-tightened belt or sheaves out of alignment, soft foot, imbalance of the load or internal imbalance of motor rotor, 
resonant speed points caused by VFDs, and the misapplication of bearings. There you have it. These are some of the factors that you want to keep in mind when you're caring for your motor. Now, being aware, taking steps to limit these stresses, it's going to help you get the most out of your motor. And that's what we want. We want these motors to last for a long, long time. Now, that's going to do it for this edition of Tom's Toolbox. Now, as you were watching this video, you're probably saying to yourself, Tom didn't have on his PPE. Well, I didn't. I had on my glasses today. But that's because we were just talking about motors. But if you're working with motors, you're repairing a motor, lubricating a motor, whatever the job calls for, make sure you wear the proper PPE. Safety is always number one. Hey, a very special thanks to Baldor for helping us out with this video. Thanks, Baldor. If you have any questions about what you have seen here today, contact your local Motion Industries branch location. Talk to the representative. I promise you, they're going to help you out. Also, check out more of Tom's Toolbox and the MI How To videos with me, Tom Clark as your host. Thanks so much for watching today, and uh, let's keep those motors running.